Hello and welcome to another of my videos. Uh, what I'm looking to do today is to cover something that you might find yourself doing on a fairly regular basis, and that is to try to make mental arithmetic simpler by rounding numbers and estimating answers. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to start today by going to a supermarket. So you get there, you pick up your trolley, you've maybe got a friend, maybe you've got a child. You get in there, it's very busy, the music's playing, lots of noise. Now you have a shopping list and what you're wanting to do is to keep a running total in your head of the amounts that you are spending just to make sure you're not spending too much. So off we go. The first item you buy costs £2.39. And then you pick something up across the aisle for £1.75. Next thing you need is 87 pence. Then the next one's 4 pounds a £6.29, something for £2.60, and something for £7.10. Now, there may be even more items in your list than the ones I put here. But I'm getting that for most of us, trying to add those up as you go along is an almost impossible task, particularly with all the distractions that there are. So, what would you do? Well, if you're like me, rather than trying to be exact about your adding up and trying to take into account the exact prices of all these items, you might just think to yourself, well, let's just make an approximation of each of these prices. So as I pick the first thing up, I maybe will just say, okay, Let's just call that two pounds. The next thing is one pound seventy five. OK, I'm going to call that two pounds. Eighty seven P. Yeah, that's about a pound. Four pound ninety nine. Well, that really is very close to five pounds. The next one, six pound twenty nine. Let's just call that six. Two pound sixty. Let's call that three. And £7.10, well, let's just call that 7 Now, by doing so, as you've gone along in your head, possibly it has been easier to add up 2, 4, 5, plus 5 is 10, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 7 is £26. So you think, I've spent about £26. And in fact, if you add up the exact amounts, in this case, they come to £25.99. So you have given yourself a very good idea of how much you are going to spend. So what have you actually done? Well, as you've picked each item up, you've looked at the amount, in this one £2.39, and you have rounded it. You have taken the price and you have rounded it, in this case, to the nearest pound. And you've done that simply to make things easier for yourself. Now, by rounding each of the amounts, when you come to add them up, what you have at the end is an estimate of how much the total cost is. And rounding and estimation are two things that work hand in hand together. Now, because this is a maths class and not a shopping trip, obviously we have to have rules. So we need to look at the rules of how we round. I'm going to use the first example here of £2.39. Now, the first thing you have to decide is how accurately you want to round this. In other words, do you want to round it to the nearest pound or maybe to the nearest 10 pence? So we'll try both of these. Let's first of all say we are going to round it to the nearest pound. Now, when we are rounding, the most important number that we look at in the amount is the number in the column after the one we are going to round to. So in this case, we are rounding to the pounds. So the most important number is the number in the 10 pence column. Now, £2.39 is somewhere in between £2 and £3. We have to decide which. Well, looking at this number here, 
means we are looking at £2.30. Now, £2.30 is closer to £2 than it is to £3. So to the nearest pound, this would round to two pounds. Let me just give you another example to see if I can make this clearer. Let's say this amount was actually two pound sixty nine. Now again, we're going to round to the nearest pound. Again, the pound column is here. So the most important number is the next number on. That's the six. Now, in this case, 60 is closer to three pounds than it is to two pounds. So in this case, we would round two pounds 69 up to three pounds. You might have spotted that I have taken absolutely no notice of the fact that there is a nine, a big number on the end of each of these amounts. Because the fact is, once you have decided which number is the important one, you can literally cross out any other number after it. We are only interested in these two digits here, the one that you are rounding to and the next one on that gives us the guidance. So let's have a look at some more amounts. OK, I won't put the pound sign on the beginning of them all, but let's say we have five pounds, 20, six pounds, 49, three pounds, 91, no pounds, 42, and three pounds, 50. Now, we need to round these to the nearest pound in each case. So, the numbers that we are going to consider is always going to be the next digit on. That never changes. And in fact, I'm so sure about that, I could even cross these out if I like. They just do not matter. Let's have a look at this. Five pounds 20. It's between five pounds and six pounds. This is a two. Five pound 20 is closer to five pounds than it is to six. So that's where we round it. Six pound is between six and seven pounds. It's six pounds 40, a four. That means it's closer to six pounds than it is to seven. So there we go, six pounds. Three pounds 90, nine is a big number. That makes it closer to four pounds than it does to three. So we round that one up. Now then, here's an interesting one. If this was your shopping trip and you bought something for 42p, where do you round it to? Well, follow the rule. We have naught pounds here. So 42p means it is something between no pounds and one pound. Because it is a four, it is actually, strange though this might seem, closer to no pounds than it is to one. So when we are rounding it, we actually round it down to nothing. Now here's the important one. Three pounds fifty. OK, we know that it is between three pounds and four pounds. The problem is... Five fifty is exactly halfway between three pounds and four pounds. So do we go up or do we go down? Well, the simple rule is, and it's one to remember, is that when it is a five, we go up always. So the amount would be four pounds. Now, let's have another look at these same amounts. But let's assume that this time you wanted to estimate the amounts well, you want it to be slightly more accurate. So rather than rounding to the nearest pound, you decide you want to round each price to the nearest 10 pence. So in this case, you are rounding to this column here. We follow the same rules. If we are rounding to the nearest 10 pence, then the most important digit that we want to look at is the next one on. So this time we are going to be considering the numbers in this column here. So let's have a look at the first one, five pounds 20. Well, as it happens, because this is a zero, it's already been rounded to the nearest 10 pence. So in a case like that, the price would stay the same. 
The next one down we have six pounds forty nine. Now to the nearest ten pence, it is somewhere between six pounds forty and six pounds fifty. So we look at the nine, and the nine is closer to fifty pence than it is to forty pence. So that amount becomes six pounds fifty. Three pounds ninety one. That's somewhere between three pounds ninety and four pounds. We look at the one. And because it's a small number, it means we are closer to £3.90 than we are to £4. So it does exactly that. It rounds to £3.90. No pounds 42. Now, you remember when we rounded this to the nearest pound, we ended up with zero. But in this case, we're rounding to the nearest 10p. So it is somewhere between 40 pence and 50 pence. Because it has a two on the end, it makes it closer to 40 pence. So that is what we would round it to. And £3.50 on the bottom, again, has already been rounded to the nearest 10 pence. So we can leave it the same. This simply means that you've made things a little bit easier for yourself. And it's easier to add up this column than it is this column. It also means that your estimate is going to be slightly more accurate than if you'd been rounding to the nearest pound. OK, let's have a go at rounding with larger numbers. Uh, let's imagine you've been very fortunate and you've managed to buy yourself a rather nice new car. After you've paid for the car, the VAT, the extras, the insurance, the total price of buying this car has come to £39,426.13p. You get home. You drive the car into your drive and who is standing there but your next door neighbour. The next door neighbour says, that's a nice new car, how much did it cost? It's unlikely that you're going to say, it costs me £39,426.13. The chances are you will give him an estimate. You might decide to round this amount to this column here. This is your ten thousands column. You think in your mind, OK, this cost thirty nine thousand. I'm going to give my neighbour the price to the nearest ten thousand. Therefore, I need to consider that number there. And it is a nine big number. That means that this car was closer to forty thousand than it was to thirty thousand. So that's what you would tell him. To the nearest 10,000, this car cost me £40,000. Or, let's look at another option. You might decide, well, I'll tell him the price to the nearest 1,000. Therefore, the nearest 1,000 column is there. What number am I most interested in at this point? It is the next number on, the 4. Now, in this case, because it's a 4, it means that the car cost closer to 39000 than it did to 40,000. So you would give him the price to the nearest thousand. It cost me 39,000. We can go on like that. The more accurate that you want to be, you might give him the price to the nearest hundred. Therefore, the number you're interested in is the two. It's only a two. Therefore, this car was closer to 39,400 than it was to 39,500. And that's what you would tell him. Let's have a look at an example of the kind of question that you might get um, in a test or exam. And Gary is buying plants for his garden. Each plant costs £3.85 and he's worked out that he needs 54 plants in total. He wants to estimate the total cost of the plants. Now, if we wanted to be particularly accurate about this, the sum that we would have to do to work out the total would be 3.85, the price, times 54. And if we were to do that, we're being very good mathematically, but the answer would be wrong, simply because this question has got the word estimate. And so many learners don't look at that word and recognise what type of question this is. Because the word estimate is saying we do not want the correct answer, 
we want an estimation. So how would we go about this? Well, we do it by rounding. We take the price, £3.85, and we round it. Now, actually here you have a choice. You could round it, as we saw earlier, to the nearest 10p, in which case you would call it £3.90. But if you really want to make things easy for yourself, you would round it to the nearest pound. So £3.85, we look at the 8, that becomes 4. Then, in addition to rounding the price, we can actually round the amount of plants. So 54 can be rounded to the nearest 10, which becomes 4 times 50. Now look how simple the maths has become. We have an answer which is an estimation and it is only £200. In fact, the real price, if you have already worked it out, is £207.90. So we are not so very far away. The important thing is that that is the correct answer for this question because the word estimate is in there. And I'm going to finish with something that looks a little bit more complicated. And it's the kind of question that we are, we are approaching GCSE level here. Um, and it simply says, give an estimate for 3.7 times 4.9 divided by 3.6. And this may typically be in an exam paper where you are not given a calculator. Yes, you could probably work it out in the end, do the multiplication and the long division, but it's fairly complicated and time consuming. Thankfully, yet again, in the question is our get out because it's saying I don't want an accurate answer. I want an estimate. So you would take each of these numbers, 3.7 to the nearest whole number, is 4. You would take 4.9 to the nearest whole number is 5 and you would take 3.6 and round it to 4 and you would simply work out the answer to that and that would be an estimate and because that's what you're asked for you get full marks. And that's it for the moment for rounding an estimation. Uh, I hope I've made it easy for you the next time you go supermarket shopping. Thank you.